Uh, let's start off with a quick introduction of today's speakers. Uh, I want to welcome our uh, senior product manager, Jason Alberino. Jason, great to see you. Hello. Yeah. Um, quick, a quick bit about myself. Uh, I am the director of product marketing for Progress's application experience product portfolio. This includes uh, Flowmon, which is used for network performance analysis and uh, network detection and response. Uh, we have um, uh, What's Up Gold for IT infrastructure monitoring, and we also have uh, Kemp Loadmaster, which is used for load balancing. Um, my job here, I've been with uh, Progress for about a year, and uh, one of the things I love about my job here is that I get to uh, do some of these kinds of presentations to help inform the audience and hopefully make uh, your day uh, better by providing some valuable insights. Jason? Oh, so I have nearly 20 years experience in the infrastructure monitoring space, 10 of those as a customer um, using various different solutions and uh, eight of those as pre-sales slash consultant for infrastructure monitoring now two years as product manager. So uh, I bring uh, quite a bit of experience since I've worked with so many customers over the years uh, consulting directly with many, many, many different customers, different environments. Yeah, Jason is our voice of experience. He also has something of an alter ego. <laughs> yes, uh, they call me the, the WUG Ninja, the What's the Gold Ninja. Um, I'll plug my personal blog, WUG.Ninja. Check it out. There you go. All right. So on behalf of Jason and myself, I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, here is a quick snapshot of our agenda. And uh, here's... We'll open with a discussion around the monitoring challenges that organizations are facing today. And then we're going to dig deeper into the various types of monitoring. These move along a scale from simple to complex, uh, with the more advanced forms helping you to reach that, uh, you know, that monitor more that we refer to in the presentation title and the abstract. A as I said, we're glad to take your questions uh, at the end. We'll also run a couple polls throughout to help us understand what you, the audience, is experiencing in your organization. Uh, and we'll cater some of our conversation around the results that we see. As networks grow increasingly complex and distributed, it's more important than ever to achieve end-to-end -end network visibility. Simply put, if you can't see it, you can't know its status. And if you don't have the right tools in place, you can't drill down to the root cause of the issue to be able to resolve it permanently and quickly. And by this, we mean everything on the network, routers, switches, uh, clouds, virtual machines, operating systems, servers, network traffic, critical applications, and more. Uh, today's network operations are often marked by proliferation. Right? There's system sprawl, there's virtual machine sprawl, there's cloud system sprawl, there's service sprawl. You know, at all the time, new systems are being created in a virtual environment that you didn't know about. Right? New systems are created in the cloud that you didn't know about. New services are being utilized. It's constant change. The network's it's a dynamic, growing entity. And the more complex it gets, the more the likelihood you're going to experience issues with performance and that dreaded word, outages, right? So let's drill down into outages a little bit. Um, and let's talk about um, the impacts of an outage. When it comes to outages and performance, there's no solution, I think it's really important to say this, and we'll say this a couple times, there's no solution that exists that covers every possible scenario. Um, outages occur for a lot of different reasons, reasons, but we can all agree on the impact. And, and of course, when you have an unavailable service or application, one of the first things that you either hear about or you know happens is that employee productivity uh, is reduced, right? They're calling you, they can't get to what they want. Um, there, there are serious implications there. Even worse, I would say, for the business is if this impacts, say, an online store or a payment processing system, something that's externally focused, something that would drive a negative customer experience. And all of this can end up with damage to your reputation, your revenue. So that's that, that business impact. It, it comes down to productivity and it comes down to cost, right? So um, to drive this home, I did a little bit of research and I think it's important just to throw some numbers at it to get an, an idea of the impact. 
Um, I looked at two studies, one by EMA that talked about the average cost per minute of an unplanned IT outage. Okay, and that comes to be almost 13,000 US dollars. Now, the study that they did, they actually talked to about 300 different organizations. And what they found was it can be as much for the largest enterprises uh, as $25,000 a minute. They also said, well, for the last outage that you had, what was your estimate of the cost to the business? And that came out to about one and a half million dollars. So some big money there. On the other hand, you know, we're talking another study. It's talking about the impacts uh, to the business. Uh, it looked at Fortune 500 companies, and it talked about a 47% loss of productivity due to a planned or unplanned outage, and then a 41% hit to brand equity and trust. So these are real. Um, th these are happening out there. Outages are a problem, and monitoring really is the best solution. So let's let's talk about um, the first kind of monitoring, something that we call non-automated detection. And that's really doing it all by hand. So uh, I'll talk more about this. And really, it comes yeah. down to even attempting to do this is almost silly, right? Uh, the picture of the uh, a small network for roughly 255 addresses, right? Well, if you're trying to collect data from all of those different systems, well, you would need to know to go to each IP address, right? Well, each IP address, you might spend 10, 15 minutes attempting to collect data, connect to protocols, get gathered data, and then you times that by 255, it becomes quickly unsustainable. I have worked with customers in the past who created their own scripts for doing this and you know, semi-automated this process. However, even that becomes unsustainable. The scripts are written by someone um, and then maintained by that person, and then maybe they leave the company and we're left with these scripts that no one else knows how to maintain. So really what it comes down to is it is possible, it's just not at all recommended. <laughs> Right. And so so if we if we move past that and we say, OK, can't do it manually, then we get to something that Jason and I have been talking about a lot recently that we've decided to term discovery intelligence. Uh, and this would be what takes you to the whole entire next level. Um, so what is what do we mean by discovery intelligence? Well, here's a definition that we crafted. Uh, it would be a system that automatically discovers the IT infrastructure information you need. And then it intelligently makes decisions on how to interpret and categorize that data. So intelligent discovery. Um, Jason? Yeah, so uh, think about the manual example of reaching out uh, directly to each one of these systems on your own, going through the protocols. You don't have to do that. There are systems out there that are intelligent that can do this for you. Um, and when we say intelligent, that means directly out of the box, it knows what to do, but also being extensible, right? So it's not enough to have predefined rules within your solution. Those rules need to be customized. And really this comes down to every network is different. There is no one size fits all for infrastructure monitoring, but important things like being able to schedule those discoveries or run them on demand, get additional information, not just about monitoring, but asset information, service tags, uh, BIOS revisions, all that type of stuff as well as, well, it's it's automated, right? You're no longer having to reach out to those systems individually. A tool is doing the job for you. Exactly. Um, let's look at this in the context of, um, of the evolution of, of monitoring. Because we talked already about about that non-automated. Um, here's a way, here's an instructive way to think about discovery intelligence. Uh, the first thing, uh, with evolution of of monitoring would be no monitoring, right? You have a we had very simple networks. It was very easy to see if they were up or down or what was wrong. Uh, as networks got more complex, we came up with a non-automated detection, that manual way, based mostly on hindsight. Something happened, uh, and you were able to determine it afterwards. Um, but then, as we move into more complex systems of today, we get something that we are calling out of the box monitoring. Um, and that's where automation kicks in, right? It provides context. It gives you deep insight into dependencies. Uh, it also helps you to get to that root cause analysis and narrow down 
what you have to look at to be able to solve issues. And that comes out of the box, so that's automation. And we're going to talk about these in depth as we go forward. The next step, of course, would be to be able to customize that. Uh, you've got multi-service uh, app support. Uh, you have an uh, environments like we just talked about earlier. There's so many changes that are going on, so many new things. Being able to adapt to that environment uh, is critical. And to be able to automate the resolutions that you need so that the environment is being fixed proactively. And, and having said that then, that's the area of discovery intelligence. We actually have, uh, you know, if we think about an axis, then we're going from low context to high and from manual to automated, but we're also going from not doing anything through a reactive type of approach into a more proactive. And that's where everyone really wants to be. Um, now, I, I do want to run a poll. Here's the, here's the poll. How much time are you spending on monitoring activities? This is the first thing that we want to, to understand. And just while people are answering, I can say, well, uh, you know, I started as a, a system administrator at a company that I was having to spend several hours a day. We had multiple different tools. Um, I eventually was able to consolidate those down to one tool. Then it was, uh, you know, an hour or less a day. And eventually it was almost set it and forget it. There was no longer ongoing maintenance required because we had configured the system according to our specifications. So it's it's normal for most people to start at that several hours a day portion, but you should eventually be able to move to maybe once a week having to do something to maintain the system. Hmm. Yeah. How about uh, let's can we see the the responses for the poll? Interesting. Oh, huh. yeah. So there are some people that are definitely at the no monitoring stage. A lot more are spending a limited time per day. All right, um, and let's let's run the second poll as well because this uh, this is sort of combined with the first one. Um, help us to understand how complex is your current network. Yeah, and, uh, I will say that number of devices doesn't necessarily dictate complexity, even very simple small environments could have a lot of complex components within. Um, but this uh, you know, generally gives you an idea of how hard the tool has to work or how much customization must be done um, to meet your requirements within your environment. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at those results. All right. Yeah. So we are seeing people that are really more at that higher level. Um, you know, I, our customers here at Progress really vary. We have people. We have people that are really looking at very defined smaller networks, but also uh, all the way up to the enterprise. So uh, this is great. This is very. This is helpful. And um, let's let's move on to talk about Jason. Can you? We've, we've talked about the evolution now. We've got, I think, a good understanding of, of where people sit uh, in our audience, but let's talk about the discovery intelligence process itself. Sure, so let, let's keep it super basic. Uh, so really it comes down to, well, something initiates that scan to say, go look at my network, right? Whether that be manual or a schedule. Um, once that scan's running, it collects data from all those different systems and then it returns all those results. But not just that, it also makes decisions based on what information's returned in those results. And I would say this is an iterative process. This is not one and done. This is something that should be ongoing. Um, I recommend scanning a, at least every 24 hours. You need to know if there's changes in your environment. And this is a, a big piece of that is the discovery intelligence and leveraging that to save yourself time. Exactly. And, and as you said, this is an iterative process. It's something that needs to be continually done because you're, more and more things are appearing uh, within your network and you have to be able to identify, categorize, and be able to monitor those. Um, let's move on to that, that stage we talked about, the out-of-the-box monitoring. So here, we define this as uh, monitoring capabilities 
built into the solution that you don't have to manually adjust or you don't have to um, have to use additional software tools. It's all there available upon installation uh, that can be that's that's pre-programmed that you can use. Right, and to, just to go more in depth there, you know, we talked about best practices, right? So this is basically industry standard is coming down to availability and performance. And you see when it, we're talking about availability, that can be anything from you know simple ICMP requests to the system, or checking the status of a port on a switch, or things like hardware status, uh, power supply failures, fan failures, and all all those. And then performance-wise, it really comes down to CPU disk and uh, memory and interface utilization. And th those are industry standard. Those should be expected in any solution you adopt. Those should be included out of the box or they're not doing you justice. Right. There's, you know, there's two, two advantages here, really. Number one is saving you time. We, we asked that question earlier, how much time are you spending? Fortunately, we didn't see too many people saying, I'm spending hours and hours a day, but that is happening, right? So that would be number one is that automation but also what the uh, the out of the box monitoring discovers through its automation um it can be so much uh based on your network it's there there are limited limits if something has an ip address so you know let, let's talk next jason about the best practices of you know what do you monitor what are the things uh, on the network that out of the box monitoring covers Sure. So let's first talk about network systems here. Uh, and we're thinking router, switch, firewall, access point, basically anything providing network connectivity. You're going to want to look at you know that ICMP request, but also individual port status, interface utilization. So you know how much traffic is passing over those ports. Uh, but other things can cause outages too, right? Power, uh, let's say uh, a power supply fails. You want to replace that as soon as possible because well, you don't like you always want redundant power supplies in your equipment. Um, but uh, let, let's keep moving, talk about operating systems. Um, and really it's a lot similar there, right? Uh, we're reaching out to the device and making sure it's available and then CPU disk and memory utilization monitoring. When it comes to cloud systems, really uh, you're looking at just, is it available from my location, right? Uh, that's the most important piece is to make sure you're able to access the system from your remote location. And then moving on to servers or physical systems, baseboard management controllers. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit since some might not be familiar. Uh, really, this is a small system included with your server that is standalone. So think HPE, uh, ILO, Integrate Lights Out, Dell, iDRAC uh, for their remote access, et cetera. But that lets you look at all of the different aspects of the system. So each individual hardware component within that system, we should be monitoring the status of. Right. And so for out of the box monitoring, these are these are things that it should be able to discover and monitor uh, all of these different um, aspects of these different systems for you. So it's all pre-programmed. It's all set up for you. Uh, I think it's great to uh, take take a, a moment to close out this section with lessons learned. So best practices aren't always about what to do. Uh, they can also be about what not to do. And uh, we've put together what we think are six uh, common issues to avoid um, within the um, uh, out of the box monitoring. So uh, the first, I think, is uh, false positives. Yeah, so false positives really are, you know, you receive an alert that uh, you go and check on the system and, oh, lo and behold, it's available, right? And this is important to note that that should tell you you need to take an action. You need to go customize your system to prevent these. No one wants to be woken up in the middle of the night by a system they did not necessarily need to receive an alert from, right? So if this ever happens to you, Make sure it takes some sort of action to correct this so it doesn't happen in the future. Yeah, like uh, if you if you have a system you know is going to be offline um, to be uh, to be like planned uh, maintenance, right? Planned maintenance, exactly. If you have planned maintenance going on, then uh, you don't want to get alerts about that because you already know it's it's offline. 
Exactly. What about um, overly overly aggressive settings? Sure. Well, this kind of ties into those false positives uh, that we were just talking about, right? So uh, within any monitoring solution, there is some sort of cycle where it goes out and reaches out to these systems, and there's timeout retry values associated with them. That's not one size fits all. I've worked with hundreds of customers, and we had to adjust these to different settings to avoid these false positives. Every network is different. At the same time, I've seen a lot of people fall victim to keeping too much data. Do you really need seven years worth of performance data on that system? Most likely not, right? So you have to think about that because well, there's a cost associated with that and it can affect the performance of the system as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, too many alerts. Yes, uh, just alert storms in general, right? Let's let's picture you know a switch with 50 servers connected to it, and that switch completely goes offline. You don't want to get 51 alerts. You want to get that one alert from that switch where the root cause of the problem is. If you get too many alerts at the same time, it makes it very difficult to know the root cause of the problem. How about non-critical? The monitoring of non-critical systems yes so this is uh very important not every system is the same in your environment and i can very confidently say that i used to work as a system admin where there's obviously very critical systems they need to be up 24 7 365 development and test systems you don't want an alert at 3 4 a.m to wake you up to go fix it those things can wait until the morning to be fixed typically. That being said, it's really important to establish some level of criticality between your systems so you can separate your alerts effectively. Yeah, and another issue that uh, avoiding is tool sprawl. I read in a recent study that the average number of monitoring tools that an organization has is between, between 10 and 12 which is crazy. But if you think about it, okay, you get a cloud and that comes with its monitoring system and you get other tools and then maybe one department has a system that they prefer, uh, maybe a legacy system and somebody else has something else that they've built and it adds up. So uh, really too many tools, um, you know, understanding, assessing, doing a survey uh, and figuring out whether you can minimize the number so you can consolidate down to lesser number or somehow integrate them into uh, a particular tool that you could use as a single, you know, they say a single pane of glass, right? That that single source of truth. Um, those would be, you know, being able to avoid that issue, um, you know, probably leads to our last number six, which is communication breakdowns. The more tools you have, the more teams that are doing different things and they're not sharing the data, um, that, that's a direct result of that. Um, being able to alert stakeholders through automated means through some of these out of the box and automated means um, is really critical. And we'll we'll talk about that a little bit in the next section. I just wanna conclude this though with um, just a summary. I think there's three things that come off of these, these common issues to avoid. Number one is you've gotta simplify your tool set. Number two is that you have to gear it towards transparency. Okay, and the third would be regularly assess and adjust your settings, right? Being able to, to figure out but what the issue is, it's not permanent. Being able to go into these tools and be able to adjust it uh, is exactly where you want to go. And that's that's really what the next section, our final section, is about, is that customized monitoring. So how do we define this versus the out-of-the-box monitoring? If you remember the evolution, it's the last piece on it. Because in this case, it's not only the out-of-the-box, it's not only the automation but it allows you to take the new information you get through monitoring and make easy adjustments with that. What do, what do we mean by that, Jason? Uh, really, it's just a extensibility of the system in general, um, not just monitoring, right? So monitor sensors, elements, whatever the vendor may be calling them. That is an important piece, right? Being able to adapt to change, you know, something changed in the environment, you have to monitor something new. An outage occurred and you, didn't know about it. your system didn't tell you about it. you need to go configure your system so it knows about this in the future but it's also notifications corrective actions and that discovery intelligence so we're not talking about just monitoring we're also talking about how people are notified can we automatically correct the issue as well as that discovery intelligence we keep talking about it's not enough for it to be static it needs to be extensible you need to be able to adjust the rules based on your requirements in your environment. Yeah, 
And then that's really what the value here is, is your unique environment being able to adjust it to resolve issues uh, and be able to detect and resolve those issues um, automatically. Now, I think probably a lot of our attendees are starting to think in their mind, okay, do they mean machine learning? I hear a lot about that now. Jason, where do you stand on the whole machine learning uh, uh, topic? <laughs> well, I, I have uh, strong opinions, we'll say. Um, some might disagree, but really this comes down to the conversation of AI ops, right? And uh, I, I take offense to the use of AI in there because I don't think we have any true artificially intelligent things. Even chat GPT itself is it's a machine learning algorithm. Um, I watched a TED talk recently, Greg Brockman uh, from OpenAI, the co-founder said, we cannot overly rely on these systems. Um, and, and I think that's true in the infrastructure monitoring space as well. Although AI ops can't help and it's in its infancy, it can't be overly relied upon. A human must be involved in uh, these types of decisions um, when it comes to correlation or actions associated with some sort of uh, down notification. Yeah. So when we're talking about that, then what are the things that that we would want to customize from from well, your experience? Yes. So the, the SSL certificates, is pro I, I put that as number one. And the reason being is we see this all the time. Even uh, last year, Google, Facebook and all the big players had some sort of outage related to certificates expiring. Uh, we have ways to monitor those, notify you when they're expiring so you don't get caught off guard. But there's also things like services and processes, right? So you know, Windows services, Linux, Unix processes. And you see I put on the first one completely custom as well. So within our solution, you're not limited to just these base types of you know service process SSL certificate. You also have the option if you're not covered by one of those built-in types, to completely customize it. So VBScript, JScript, or PowerShell, we are compatible with. So anything you could do with a script, you can monitor and automate. Um, you know, on the discovery intelligence piece, we're really talking about customizing those scan rules, right? So being able to say, okay, this is a switch based on information return. But what about new systems, new vendors, right? The system should be extensible so you can specify those no, new scan rules as well as adjust which monitors or attributes get associated with those systems. And same goes for actions. We talked about it a little bit, but it's really mostly about that automated resolutions piece, right? So you get an alert that your service is down and it just needs a restart. You should be automating that. Don't waste your time on this any longer. <laughs> Anytime you're receiving an alert, try and make sure you're looking at what are the corrective steps I took and whether or not you could automate it. Um, the data display, it's just down to, well, everyone has their different preferences when it comes to how to display the data, so you should be able to customize this as well. And then on the automations piece, uh, we're talking about integrations with an inbound REST API, and I think we have a separate slide for that, Larry. Yeah, so what is an inbound REST API, Larry? Oh, well, it's a, a way to get or set data for integration to your other business, uh, to your other business tools. It's it's those connections um, that are made to be simple, like what examples? Right, so it's, uh, really it's displaying monitoring data is a good example, right? That we get this request yeah. all the time. I wanna show my monitoring data elsewhere. Well, that that's what the inbound REST API makes possible, but also other things like maybe you wanna automatically start monitoring systems as soon as they're created, or maybe you wanna grab data from another system like Active Directory, uh, a CMDB, et cetera, and update the monitoring system. Those are all possible with an inbound REST API. Yeah, clearly a way to monitor more, as we were saying. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, well, this takes us to the last last section here. Just to summarize, uh, there's two things I want to cover here. The first is, um, so we've already mentioned Progress What's Up Gold. We've shown you various dialogues throughout, talked about all these features uh, and the approach to discovery intelligence. These are all available within What's Up Gold. Um, it's got a powerful combination of out-of-the-box functionality, intuitive workflows, and system integrations like we just talked about. And so it lets you discover and monitor more of the network and find and fix your infrastructure problems fast, whether that's on-prem, whether that's in the cloud, or in a hybrid setup. Right? And there's easy customization, which is a primary focus for the product.
So in terms of end-to-end -end visibility, it offers a unique interactive mapping interface. You can see it in the, the lower screen there. It's all point and click, allows you to drill down. Uh, it's color coded to allow you to very quickly at a glance, see everything connected to your network and whether that's servers, applications or clouds. Um, and it can even monitor and optimize network traffic and perform log management. Uh, finally, it, it's worth noting that WhatsApp Gold um, or, or any monitoring system that has that out of the box and the customized monitoring is going to help you prove the value of what you're doing. And that's important with any of our jobs, right? You want people to be able to see what network operations is capable of, and you wanna be able to share it. So shareable and customizable drag and drop dashboards, scheduled reporting, like we've talked a little bit about, historic trend analysis, even creating asset inventories that um, help you to assist with the man mandatory compliance audits that are occurring if that's something you need. These are all that transparency, that communication, um, and that show of value that we always need to do within our jobs to have people understand you know, why we're doing what we're doing and, and what has happened. Um, we, in terms of um, what's up gold, um, I would say that you know, discovery intelligence isn't just a theory. It's actually a practical application you can see and test yourself, whether that's through a free trial, which is available on our site. We also have an overview video that's available and an interactive demo if you wanna go in and test it yourself. That is always our latest version of What's Up Gold. And, and these are ways to go in and actually see what do we mean by out of the box? What do we mean by, uh, by able, the ability to customize? What do we mean by, uh, by these kinds of, uh, uh, communication tools. So, so we encourage that. And I just want to finish here before we get to the q and I see we've got a good number of questions. Um, five takeaways. So let's summarize. Number one, that you can monitor more of these growingly, increasingly complex networks through the combination of automation and customization. And we, we said it earlier, um, we'll say it again, no existing solution is going to cover every possible outage scenario. That's just a, a fact. Uh, you need to have a tool that can be customized for those scenarios where you didn't get alerted about the outage. And then that customization should be easy. Yeah, I read a survey online where they talked about, they surveyed uh, several hundred network administrators who were very happy that they could see 80% of their network. I think we can do better, but being able to see that, um, I think it shows that there still is a long way to go to be able to see more of the, of, of the monitoring of the network. Um, I would say also, you're being able to address your specific use cases, what you have on your own network, whether it's uh, 255 devices and systems or, or several thousands of, uh, you know, being able to adjust to that is what you uh, what you have to look for in a specific tool. Yeah, and really, I said this earlier as well, but I'm going to repeat: you need to take action to avoid these common mistakes, right? So, the, a good example is the the false positive. If you take no action, you are going to receive that false positive again. And fine tuning is an ongoing thing, right? But as I mentioned earlier, you can get to the point where you don't have to fine tune anymore. It's perfect for your environment. Yeah. Last one, really, that you you do need a solution like What's Up Gold. The the manual way of doing things or the simplified way of monitoring, it's not going to work in today's network uh, situations uh, and the way we're building these things out. So employing discovery intelligence for that end-to-end -end visibility, for that hybrid network, that's really, that's the direction we need to go in. Um, there's all different aspects of this. So I guess at this point, I would like to take some questions. And uh, Jason, I am going to break out the question box and see what we've got. I see some still coming in here too. Mm -hmm. yeah, keep your questions coming in. Uh, attendees. All right. Let's see. I'm not sure about this one, but um, Bonnie wants to know, do you have any patch management solutions? The answer is no to that. We do not. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. No, that is not. Um, 
that's not something we we can do. Um, we can help there, but it's not full on patch management. So go what's up gold does collect information about and what software is installed and what Windows uh, patches have been applied, what software is on your Linux Unix system. So it can help, but it doesn't actually manage it. It's more of a, an inventory of that data. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie also had a question about uh, where are our solutions positioned in the Gartner quadrant? And um, it's an interesting question. I work with Gartner uh, on an ongoing basis. And I can tell you that Gartner actually doesn't have a quadrant for IT infrastructure monitoring. They have what's called a market guide. Uh, and they just published their latest update. And we are in there. They don't actually, um, they list vendors. Uh, but I think what's really informative, if you have a Gartner uh, if you have a Gartner, if you're a Gartner client and you have access to Gartner research, is um, it talks about how, uh, sort of what we were talking about today, how this market is evolving, um, what are a number of the important features like the ones we talked about today that you need to expect in a tool, um, ways to think about how to set the tool to your organization, uh, organizational needs. So I, I would highly recommend that. It just came out last month. So that's a, a great resource. All right. Let's see. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble. This is a kind of a small dialogue I tried to box. Flag, start flagging questions. Um, okay. High priority there. All right. Oh, uh, Jason, what's the licensing model for What's Up Gold? That's an easy one. Yeah, so it uh, really comes down to device-based licensing. So uh, we license by device by default. That means on a single device, you can have as many of these monitors as you'd like. And that's why we really encourage this customized monitoring so much. Not only is it easy to create custom monitors in What's Up Gold, each individual monitor you add is giving you more and more value for that license. So we, we pride ourselves on the device-based licensing. And there are um, also add-ons as well as uh, different licensing models available. The most common one we offer is our premium edition. Um, you can find that on whatsupgold.com slash editions. Um, Martin has a good, interesting question. We, we haven't talked at all about security here. Um, he's asking how What's Up Gold can help in cybersecurity. Well, uh, we sort of talked about it a little bit, right, with that iterative discovery process. Part of cybersecurity is knowing what systems are connected to your environment, right? How would you know that unless you had a tool like What's Up Gold periodically scans and, hey, that we found this new thing on your environment. But not only that, I, I mentioned earlier, um, there's add-ons for What's Up Gold. One of those is network traffic analysis. As mm -hmm. a piece to that network traffic analysis, we actually can look at for malicious traffic as well. Um, that can help in the security space too. And as I mentioned, uh, I think in the previous question, asset inventory, right? And knowing what's installed, where, when it was installed, things along those lines could be helpful in uh, security audits. There's a question um, from Mosin about uh, uh, SaaS, I think, cloud-based software as a service. Um, is there, he wants to know, is there any way to use a cloud-based software to monitor instead of deploying the software on-prem? Yes, you can. So uh, What's Up Gold just requires a Windows operating system. We don't care where that is, cloud, virtual, physical system. As long as it's Windows operating system, we support it. And it is a browser-based uh, interface as well. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, could What's Up Gold be used as an asset management solution? And if not, can you connect WUG to an asset management solution? And do we have examples? Yeah, well, they, it really depends on your requirements, right? Like I've worked with customers who, yes, they use What's Up Gold as their asset management. And I've worked with others that need something more in depth, right? As I mentioned, it collects information like serial numbers, asset tags, uh, firmware levels, anything you would really want from an inventory solution. It just depends on your exact requirements. That being said, if you have additional requirements, the inbound REST API does make it possible to integrate with other um, management databases, asset management databases. All right, here's a technical one from Isaac. Are you ready? <laughs> when in auto discovery mode for SNMP enabled devices, 
Does WhatsApp Gold have the ability to show the different interfaces that interconnect the devices? Ooh, I love this question because yes, we do that automatically. We build you a topology map automatically based on your discovery. So uh, all that comes through um, during the, the SNMP piece of the discovery. And we do a lot of correlations between all the ARP tables and a bunch of other things to confidently say, okay, this system's connected to this other one on this specific port. You get a visual representation of that as well as you know a, a text-based report if you prefer it that way. You want another technical one? <laughs> sure, I love this All right, one. Here we go. Uh, this one uh, comes from Bresh. Uh, whether SAML integration is possible? He says, while referring some of the documents, I saw that WhatsApp Gold supports application pool identity. So I will say indirectly, yes. So we WhatsApp Gold uses something called OpenID Connect, uh, which is a standard that many different vendors have employed and does actually enable some single sign-on capabilities. However, SAML is not directly supported there. It can it can be made to work, but I would say uh, that is a feature request that we're looking to serve in the future. Okay. Ooh, oh, so many great I'm questions. I'm not sure what. I know. I'm. I'm not sure. That was a pretty technical one. Uh, oh, um, do you have anything that can monitor user response times for different applications? Uh, I would say no, not directly out of the box at this point in time. However, it is something I've customized for customers in the past. Uh, remember, I said I did consulting for a long time. You can make WhatsApp Gold do anything you want, right? It all comes down to can I get that data and how do I get that data and then just uh, collecting it. Um, so for example, on uh, let's say just a web page, right? Uh, being able to launch a browser and go see how long did it take to load this page and then be alerted if it goes out of threshold. That's absolutely possible. Um, it's not directly out of the box, but it is very easily customized. And there's examples of this on our community forums. All right. Um, this is an interesting question. I'm not sure what you're going to say as an answer. <laughs> but this one comes from uh, Radislaw, and he wants to know what type of devices are not supported by WhatsApp Gold. So mm, um, I, I like that yeah. question. Uh, really, what's a gold can monitor anything with an IP address. That's the base requirement. If it has an IP address, you're going to be able to discover and monitor it in what's a gold. Now, the other piece of this is how in depth can you monitor it, right? So without credentials, you absolutely can discover anything with an IP address and do port checks. That in-depth monitoring, though, will require some sort of credentials. Uh, and we have a, a bunch of different types of credentials you can specify. So it really comes down to what the device supports from a, a protocol perspective. We're really big into standards and protocols. What's up gold is agentless, so it needs to be able to reach the system and grab that data over the wire um, is really the base requirement. But uh, as long as it has an IP address, it's supported in what's up gold. All right, yeah. And you know, some of the things, we, we didn't go into a lot of detail, some of the things that you can also monitor that maybe aren't out of the box necessarily. Um, what would some of those things be? Um, um, well, that's that's a little bit more of a difficult question, but uh, just a quick example off the top of the head, I don't know, uh, let's say you have a, a Raspberry Pi in your environment that's ultra critical for some reason. You can easily add additional discovery intelligence to customize the monitoring based on your specifications for that. And the discovery process will use your rules from there on out unless you change them. But that's what we're talking about with that discovery intelligence and being extensible. There could be a new device tomorrow that everyone needs and no, no one has any information on, right? It's the tool itself needs to be customizable to accommodate for those situations where there's a, you know brand new system services, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you know, related to that, Rakesh had a question. He said, how skilled do you need to be to start using What's Up Gold out of the box? What would you do from day one? How would you progress to start using it more of the other features of the product? 
Oh, sure. So to, I can speak from experience here. Remember, I was a system admin. I came into a company that had many different solutions. And I can definitively say what's up gold is the easiest to use solution out there. Everything is right in front of your face, point and click. There's uh, the, the menu structure is very simple to follow. And there's tons of great documentation as well as an active community. In terms of getting started, it really just comes down to getting it installed, uh, which is mostly just hitting next a bunch of times, and then logging into the web interface, adding some credentials, and then running your discovery. That's really the basis to get started. And you know, most people can accomplish all of this in less than an hour. I, I used to do trainings for What's Up Gold where we would live install the product and configure it all the way through in an hour or less, including the add-ons. So it's actually very simple to get started. And uh, really we, we have people who can help too. So we're, we have a tech support team if you're a customer, but we also have pre-sales engineers if you're not a customer yet that you can reach out to and get assistance and help. Here's a question from Ruesh. He's got a, he's got a bunch of questions. I think we may have to get back to you um, after the webinar with some answers because some of these are a, a bit technical. But, um, but this is one thing I, I did mention earlier about compliance and about how What's Up Gold can help you with your um, compliance requirements. But he actually wants to know if WUG is HIPAA or ISO 27001 compliant itself. I'm not sure. And uh, I think technically those don't directly apply, but uh, for example, we do have uh, customers in the medical vertical. So uh, the answer is yes, we're monitoring systems uh, that are subject to those compliances and therefore what's up gold would be compliant. Otherwise they, they couldn't use that solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's just do, let's do one more um, and then close it out for today. Um, all right, here is one um, on monitoring servers. Does What's Up Gold give reports on multi, uh, sorry, on I think it's malfunctional hard drives, memory shortage, et cetera? Yes, so the when it comes to you know drive status and things failing, that traces back to what we were talking about earlier with the baseboard management controllers. What's Up Gold is using uh, a standard by DMTF called Redfish, and many vendors have adopted this standard. And really, it, it gives a status about every single hardware component within the system, including CPU, memory, hard drives, uh, temperature sensors, uh, everything within the system, uh, uh, you can end up with hundreds of monitors on a single device. And we're looking at the individual status of each one of those components. Um, when it comes to memory sorted, that goes back to the best practice you we were talking about with memory utilization, performance monitoring. That's out of the box with everything. However, you need to make sure that the system has some sort of access. Remember, what's up gold is agentless. We can collect CPU information and in, our memory information in many different ways, uh, SNMP, WMI, VMware, Hyper-V, Tyan, et cetera. So there, there's a lot of different ways to get that information directly out of the box. Yeah, and you know, to reinforce something that you said earlier too, um, it is licensed and priced by device rather than by sensor report. And I think that's really critical when you're getting so much information out and you have such complex devices um, that when it comes to scaling, as your network grows and you're scaling, um, the price is contained because of that device-based um, practice. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we have, I know we have a bunch of other questions. We're going to try and we will respond to those uh, personally and answer those for you. Uh, it's been a great webinar. Jason, thank you so much for bringing all your knowledge to this. Uh, it's great. It's great to sit down with you as always. Uh, and I want to thank the audience 